Hi there, team. So today I'm here with uh, one of my office favorites. Uh, I feel like every time someone comes in my office, they're moving my little wooden figure. And um, it's because he's, you know, fun to move around. He's very flexible and very movable. And the reason I have one of these is because this was used quite often when I was in college, when I was in art school, they would have these so that you could kind of get a sense of how people move and how the move, human body moves in place. And another thing that I really like about these um, wooden figures or these figures that are often used in art is they segment each of your um, body parts at the joint. So it helps you, similar to how we were talking about when we did our Keith Herring pieces in our other Strong Foundation Challenge, uh, it helps you think about the human body as joints so that it can move because that's what makes things look more realistic. So today we're gonna do an exercise that I did really often when I was in art school. We didn't always use these. Um, my person was missing a little foot there. We didn't often use these though. When we were in college, we had a lot of live models who would stand in different positions. And one of the challenges that we had to work with is they would give us a position for 30 seconds only. And our instructor or our college professor really wanted us to focus on getting the movement and the joints in place. So what we're gonna do today is I'm going to give you um, a few options for my running person. And we're going to practice drawing him. And then when we're done today, I wish that I, I'll try and sit behind him a little more so you can see him uh, a little bit better. But uh, my hope is and my goal for you is to maybe try this at home. Be thinking about the joints. Maybe you can do it. Maybe you have a sibling that will be a model for you. I'm kind of balancing him up there so you can see it. And then I also, of course, have my phone kind of working as my Elmo here so you can see the different positions that we're working on. And maybe we'll do five positions. Maybe we'll do that. So he's starting off, he's in the running position and I'm just gonna talk through one with you first. And that's what I'll use this big space for. So I'll turn this sideways and use the big space for that before we get started with our four mini sections. So of course, you're gonna be doing this in a quicker time later. But I do just want to show you what it looks like to be drawing this and to be thinking about the human form so that you can eventually create better models. And, and when you see people who do life drawing, they very, very often start in this phase of just sketching out where the body is, and then they start filling in the meat and the muscles and the clothes on top of it. So we have our person running here. And as always, I'm going to start with the head because that's the top of our paper and that's gonna give us the link that we need later. So the head is in this model's situation, oval, and it's sort of slanted forward a bit, little bit. You'll notice that it's not perfectly upright. It's kind of slanted like that. So when I draw my oval on my paper, oops, let me flip it upside down for you. Let me do this upside down for you. So when I um, have my model, he's, running and his his face is um moving towards that now he has a little bit of a neck and you'll notice if you look closely at my model his neck is actually a circle all of the joints are so when we draw those joints we simply draw a little circle that's going to remind us that's a moving piece that's a piece of the body that moves so i have my little circle for a neck then i have sort of a square circle chest and again, do you notice how it's tilted on my model? And you can be following along at home. So there's my um, person. He's kind of moving forward. You can see that he's moving forward. Next, I'm going to go with this joint that's in front. And this joint that's in front is on the back shoulder. And it's that circle that's a moving piece. So we use a circle. And then we look at the angle. Remember, we did this in Keith Gehring, the piece from the shoulder to the elbow. What is the shoulder to the elbow doing here? Well, I notice that it's moving upwards. So when I draw it, I'm going to draw an oval that's moving upwards. Again, I have a joint, which is a circle. My elbow is a circle. And then I look at my forearm. That's from my elbow to my wrist. Look here. It's facing down. So I draw an oval facing down. 
I draw a circle, that's my wrist, that's a bendy point. And let's see, his hand's kind of facing down too, like that. So I have my head, my chest area, my kind of a collarbone, and one arm. Next, I'm going to do the bottom arm. Now this joint's a little hidden from you. So we're gonna draw up behind it just so we know it's there. But when it's time for us to draw on top of this and erase kind of the skeleton or the bones that we're creating, again, similar to Keith Herring's work, um, we're gonna know that that's where it's coming from. This time, my arm, my upper arm is going straight down. So I'm gonna draw a line going straight down. Again, you won't see that shoulder, but we're drawing it so that we know that the joints are there. We're at an elbow. What shape is that? A circle. Our bendy joints are circles. So we're gonna draw a little circle there. Next, we look at that forearm. What direction does that forearm move in? It's pretty horizontal. And again, we're looking at the shape and it's kind of an oval. So we're gonna do an oval shape that way. Mm -hmm. I have a bendy place, that's my wrist. So I add a circle. And then I kind of have his arm facing up real weird, but that's all right. Draw that shape. Look at him, now we have our head, our neck, and our whole upper body. Now notice again, I'm gonna move him closer that right here, there's another circle. And that's because right there at our waist is another bendy point. Now, no, when you look at people walking down the street, they don't have a weird circle here where their belly is, but we do draw that circle in because it helps us differentiate between the upper body and the lower body. Because sometimes our upper body, especially in this situation, is moving in a different direction than our lower body. Now, I drew my upper body as kind of like a long triangle, but if you notice, my lower body is more of a square. So I'm going to draw my lower body, and this lower body seems very up and down. It's very stagnant. So I'm going to draw a little square there. That shows that he's moving. That shows that his upper body is moving in a different direction than his lower body. Now I'm at my legs, finally. At my hips, my legs are moving, so I have a circle. I'm gonna start, ooh, ooh, calm down, little guy. He's trying to run away from me. So I'm gonna start with my front leg there, and I'm gonna draw a little circle. And from there, we notice his leg, and again, it's at a diagonal, and it's going out forward. We have a long oval here. Look at how much longer this is than our arms. So we're gonna draw that oval longer. Mm -hmm. I'm at the knee. The knee is a bendy place on our body. So we're gonna draw a circle. Then I notice that my shin, that's this area from the knee to the ankle is going straight up and down. So I'm gonna draw another oval straight up and down. And then I have a little foot. This guy has only one foot. He's missing a foot. Poor guy. He was just moved around too many times. So again, that's an oval and a circle. We have an ankle and a foot. All right. Now we have one more leg to do. We have a one-legged runner right now. And this leg, I might run out of room. That's okay. We would run out of room in art school all the time. It's, it's fluid. Let your art flow, but we do want to get that in. So again, we're at that hip and we're going to have that circle piece in there. And we notice that this is sort of up and down, but it is at a backwards angle. So we are going to kind of give it that little bit of an angle there. Bloop. Then we're at the knee. That's a bendy spot. So we draw a circle. And then we draw our leg, this goes pretty horizontally. That's pretty side to side there. So we're gonna draw a pretty side to side there piece. And then, um, you know, my guy is missing a foot there, but we're gonna pretend he has a foot. We're gonna pretend that it didn't fall off so that he can actually be doing the running that he's doing. So now we have our running person. We actually have the form. Now, if you were writing in pencil, this would be your opportunity to start drawing clothes on. So we would draw 
and now we have a body to draw on, we would draw the long sleeves and color it in. And if you color it in, and I'm not gonna do my best work, but I just want you to get an understanding. We start to really have a person, oh, another marker. This marker is running out, so guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add it to my marker collection of undone markers, uh, and, and we're gonna make some, some beautiful watercolors with it. But you can see already, just with doing that first part, I have a fully realized person who is not a stick figure, because I know when your teachers are asking you to illustrate your stories, oh my goodness, my poor, poor, unfortunate markers. But when your teachers are asking you to illustrate their stories, they don't wanna see you using um, stick figures anymore. You can draw a person just by using shapes. He's already a working person here or she, I haven't really drawn hair or anything yet. And you can add those details later. So look at how easy it is to draw. So that was us taking the slow version. Now we're gonna try drawing super, super fast. And I hope that you went ahead and followed along with me there doing that. If you didn't, you can always rewind and go back and practice drawing it slowly. We're gonna practice also drawing it quickly because like i said in art school you want it to be second nature it's sort of like the way you do your fluency in math or in reading when you see sight words and you just need to know them quickly the point in uh doing these type of exercises and doing them in 30 second time increments is to uh encourage you and strengthen your skills at drawing these pieces quickly and identifying movement quickly so that when it does come time for you to draw a real person you have the, the skills to do it quickly. So I'm gonna move his position. Let's see, maybe this time he's, uh, maybe this time he's falling. Hmm. Kind of looks like he's jumping now, doesn't he? Let's move this up. So now my person is, uh, is, is falling a little bit. I wish I had uh, something a little bit taller to put this on. Let's see if I can come up with something quickly. I don't know. Um, but I do want you to be able to see him fully while you're kind of working with me here. There we go. Now he's there. And I'm gonna kind of move behind him a little bit so you can see him a little bit better. So I'm gonna start the 30 second timer. And in that 30 second timer, I'm gonna be asking you in one of your spaces, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be super neat, but it does need to be your best. And I'm gonna draw in this top square first. And we're gonna see how much of him we can draw in 30 seconds. That means that you have to be thinking really, really quickly. Are you ready? Oh my goodness, it's been a long time since I've uh, challenged my skills like this. So here we go, ready? Set. Doing it upside down isn't going to be easy for me either, but. There's that timer. So you can see that I, um, it's certainly not as neat as when we took our time the first time, but I kind of have him and he's falling in the air. I'm showing that he's falling just by his body. Now, some of my angles are not perfect. In my haste, I accidentally put two arms up rather than one arm up and one arm down. So if I was working in pencil, that would be something I would go back and correct. I'm going to move on to my next one. And again, I'm going to challenge myself to do something different. This time, let's see. He's doing, uh, it looks like some kind of yoga pose. And again, imagine he has a little foot there. Poor guy. 
All right, so this is our second pose. This would be a hard pose for a model to do for you. But if you have a model at home that will hold the pose for you, that's another great way to practice since you might not have a wooden person. Let's start back from the beginning, 30 seconds. Here we go. Oh, I kind of ran out of room there. That's okay. You do your best. All right, I just barely got that one done in time. Again, it's not perfect. And again, I ran out of a little space at the bottom. Look how short his poor little leg is there. But I got the general idea that his arm was back, his one hand's forward, and he has his legs kind of bent in front of him. There would be corrections I would make here because this leg should be forward a little bit more. But again, the goal is for us to do it in um, a quick amount of time. Um, I kind of went into this space, so I'm gonna do one more with you. But again, you can always go back, um, ask someone to model it for you, model in the mirror for yourself, look at your bendy pieces. Remember to make those circles for your joints and ovals for all your bones or your skeleton. And that way you can go back over it later to create an actual real looking person. So uh, let's see, I, I, I'm gonna make my last um, pose, one that's the most common one that comes into my office. See if I can get him there. Cause he very often is dabbing and my boys get him, but I guess his elbow isn't, isn't cooperating with me right now. There we go. There we go. All right, so now my, my guy is kind of dabbing here. And we're gonna start that timer over one more time. Again, be looking at joints. He has a long straight arm here, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have joints. I know that it's easy when we're working with a really short time frame to kind of skip that step and do a one big long one, but we really want to show all those movement pieces. It is important to our practice and it is going to help us as we continue working on the human form. Ready, go. All right. I'm probably going to go a little tall here. Last time I ran out of legs for my room, room for my legs, legs for my room. What am I talking about, Ms. Schmidt? Remember, it's not a very long amount of time. Woo! All right. There's mine. I have all my joints in there. I didn't get the chance to make his hands, but I do have all my joints in there of him standing up straight and tall, his, cro his uh, crooked hand in order for to have the dab pose, and his one that's going outward. So gentlemen, again, this is something you can practice at home. It's something that's really gonna support your ability to draw people later in life. It's something that is required as you move on to art in middle school, high school, and college in order to really understand the human body. So get out of that habit of drawing stick figures, get into the habit of thinking about the human body and thinking about all the little joints that make it. Because look at this, that's so much better than drawing a little stick figure doesn't make sense you can do better you deserve to do better so practice 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 this and um, see what type of characters you can come up with until next time <laughs>